to welcome ang ating pong uh, uh, PSC officials that are with us also joining us sa ngayong hapon po na ito. And to give their welcome message, can I call on our uh, PSI National Training Director and the Project Director of the National Sports Summit 2021, Mr. Mark Edward Velasco. Sir, magandang hapon po sa inyo. Good afternoon. Thank you so much, Joash. Uh, to all the participants uh, in the National Sports Summit, we are in our 14th session. And in this very hot Thursday afternoon, uh, Wednesday afternoon, I'm sorry, we're going to discuss a very interesting topic. Our speaker today is an accomplished architect, uh, a professor in uh, a very well known university, uh, a very uh, accomplished uh, professor at uh, University of the Philippines. He's also a historian, a history major. Uh, his passion for the arts uh, translates to his uh, works, uh, architecture. And um, recently, as the Rizal Memorial Sports Coliseum was restored, he was tasked to uh, lead the team in uh, design and restoration po ng, uh, ng uh, ating Rizal Memorial Coliseum. Uh, good, uh, and it would be, I think, it would be a very interesting insight for all of us this afternoon to see uh, through his lens kung ano po ba ang importance ng history, ng arts, and even sa ating uh, sports structure. So uh, with that, we'd like to welcome you to the 14th session of the National Sports Summit. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, Sir Mark Velasco. Tama po si Sir Mark no, sa kanyang nabanggit about something about our guest speaker for this afternoon. It's really definitely something to look forward to ngayong hapon po na ito. Patuloy po tayo move forward po no, sa ating session for this afternoon. Ang alam niyo po, uh, kanina po, no, pa, we have, nag-skip po tayo sa ating about the project video. And as you know, uh, alam niyo naman po yan, ano, na ang National Sports Summit po is a three-phase project aimed to provide po no, both learning po sa, sa ating pong lahat and also again, uh, not only to uh, um, namin matutunan po tayo on our first phase but to have uh, consultations po kain, sa inyo po, kasama po kayo doon. Ano? At tayo pa lamang po ay nasa first phase ng ating uh, project. And uh, we will move on to our phase two. Na we're, as mentioned po, no, we have that data processing and ang ating pong phase three going into consultations na kasama po ang ating mga participants and stakeholders. Muli binabati ko po no, ang mga kasama po natin ngayong hapon na ito sa ating Zoom platform. Si Sir David Carter from the Philippine Judo Federation is with us. Magandang hapon, sir. Together with uh, si Sir Don Sombrio ng ating uh, Secretary General for our Archery NSA. Welcome din po sa inyo and ng ating Executive Director for the National Academy of Sports, Professor Joy Reyes, who also joined our chairman. Binabati po natin ano, ang ating uh, chairman, William Butch Ramirez, for uh, recently celebrating his 71st birthday kahapon po yan. And uh, together with Prof. Joy and the rest of our commissioners, uh, something, a big news for Philippine sports. Po. Moving forward, ang session po na ito ngayong hapon is one of the many lectures that you will be having for the first phase of the summit. As said earlier, ang ating pong sports conversations will be presided over by recognized figures from the local to the international sports scene to deliver short lectures in the online conference format. And afterwards, nagkakaroon po tayo ng open forum that will be facilitated to gather insights and views as a synthesis for every session. Ang ating pong topic, a very interesting topic for this afternoon, the talk traces the development of modern sports infrastructures in the Philippines from the early 20th century to the present. It will discuss socio-cultural forces that influence the sport architecture through iconic structures, through a transhistorical and stylistic survey. Finally, ang ating pong lecture for this afternoon will be a narrative narrate the story. It will narrate the story behind the rehabilitation of the Rizal Memorial Coliseum to illustrate the potential of existing infrastructures for redevelopment. Yan po ang ating topic. And ating pong guest speaker for this afternoon is an architect, agricultural critic, and an art historian. He is a professor 
from the University of the Philippines College of Architecture, where he heads the History, Theory, and Criticism Studio Laboratory and is director of its research office. He completed his BS Architecture and MA in History and PhD in Philippine Studies at the University of the Philippines. His research interests include the intersections of power relations and architecture and the history of colonial and post-colonial architecture in the Philippines. He is the multi-awarded author of publications of Philippine architecture and cultural studies, designer and curator of architectural exhibitions, and producer and director of a series of documentations on Philippine built environments, such as Lunan, Master Builders, and Deco Decoded. He is the author of Edifice Complex, Power, Myth, and Marcos State Architecture in 2003, and Arch Architecturang Filipino, a history of architecture and urbanism in the Philippines in 2008, among others. Is, he also serves as, as consulting architect of the city of Valenzuela. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, help me in welcoming our guest speaker for session 14, Professor Gerard Lay Ligo. Sir, magandang hapon po sa inyo. Magandang hapon. Good afternoon sa ating lahat. No? So in this lecture, uh, I, will, uh, no, I will start now with uh, colonialism no? as a factor in in the development of modern sports and uh, ang akibat na infrastructure dito. So, wag tayo magugulat ha, kasi medyo magko-cultural studies tayo and then we will shift, no? Makikita natin yung intersections, no, nung colonial power and the development of sports, no? Kasi ang assumption, no, ng mga Amerikano nung no? early 20th century, we are unfit, no, for self-government. And the Filipino bodies needs to to be retrained no for self governance so i will start no? i will start with my my lecture so my my ano no my the title of my lecture today is bodybuilding nation no? the development of sports infrastructure in the philippines so why the body no the body is the the will be the sub, the subject no of uh, transformation no during the early 20th century. No? So physical education, uh, competitive athletics, and modern sports were introduced no? in the early 20th century with the advent of American colonialism no? in the Philippines. So sports bridge the, the physical and cultural gap between the colonizer and the colonized. No? Physical education and Western sports were instruments no? to prepare the colonial subject, the colonial subject, we the Filipino, no, for greater participation in civic life in a popular democratic government. No? So the new athletic discipline was an exercise of biopower and uh, the pedagogical apparatus no, to disseminate the modern values among Filipinos who were perceived as uh, unfit, no? uh, unfit, perceived as native uh, savages needing moral tutelage and physical exercise was meant to make them no uh, fit no for for self government no? so the construction of sports infrastructure no for instance the completion of the Rizal Memorial Stadium in 1934 is a culmination of the American social re-engineering agenda through sporting tutelage. So tutelage, no? And its spaces, yung spaces nung, ano, no, nung stadium is a symbolic arena wherein colonial modernity, the biopolitics, when we say biopolitics, the ability to transform the body no? by, by regulating no? everyday life no? of the Filipino, the, the reshaping of the body into the ideal, no? A streamlined body, and later on, this infrastructure na, na mabubuo no? uh, will become a trajectory wherein we can we imagine no? nation. So, ang bibigat ng mga terms, so hindi ko na babasahin yung ano, ikikwento ko na lang. No? So, ang ano, no? yung mga Amerikano, ang una nilang ginawa nung dumating sila sa Pilipinas was to survey no? the Filipino body. 
So sukatin yung ating anthropometrics, no? Tingnan kasi nga ang kanilang ano, no? Ang kanilang agenda is to 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 train us, no? To to give us uh, civilization, no? Uh, meron silang ganung parang ano, no? parang feeling nila they have the divine mandate, no? To civilize us. So in their imagination, we are savages, no? Needing uh, to be elevated, no? To 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 the levels of civilization. So, ang isang unang ginawa ni Dean Worcester was to survey, no? Uh, was to survey uh, the mountain province, no? So, it actually lumabas ito sa no, no, sa National Geographic magazine noong 1911, no? So, sinurvey nila at nag-organize sila ng uh, sporting event, no? So, kung makikita niyo sa slide, uh, you will see the first uh, topic, no? the first title here is The Field Sports Among Wild Men of Luzon no? in the Philippine Islands by Dean C. Worcester. No? So this was published in uh, the ano, no? National Geographic of 1911. So anong sinasabi dito sa, sa sports na to? So ang mga Pilipino daw talaga was very enthusiastic no? when it comes to sport. At yung pag-conduct nila nung, nung sporting events na to dun sa dun sa mountain province help alleviate no yung na-redirect no yung energies ng mga natives from head hunting no so instead resting so nagkaroon ng ano no ng communal pride no so instead na mag head hunting mag wrestling na lang no so ito yung ano no ito yung mga larawan no mula dun sa sa survey na yon so ano ang consequence nito so Ang, ang consequence dyan, so natigil, no? natigil among uh, the natives no? because of the introduction of sports no? and uh, sportmanship. No? Uh, natigil yung mga headhunting expedition. No? Instead, nagkaroon ng, ano, internally, nagkaroon ng pagtitrain doon sa mga, mga tribo no? para mas gumaling sila doon sa susunod na, ano, no? na, na taon kung saan gaganapin yung sporting events ayon ano pang naidulot no nung no, 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 no sports no nung no modern sports so na divert din yung attention no na, ng mga Pilipino kasi ito yung ano no? ito yung sakit ng mga uh, Pilipino no especially during the Spanish period na hindi matigil itong gambling no yung sabong so meron talagang dedicated na arena no para sa sabong as nung panahon ng Kastila. So, it was a regulated game. Huh? Yan, tupada. So, lumabas, no? halimbawa sa independent, no? isang newspaper, isang karikatsur, no? boxing with uh, extrapriate, no? the, the cockpit evil. So, ibig sabihin, uh, the introduction of sport really had a, had a transformative, no? uh, has a transformative uh, capacity, no? Uh, para maano ma, no ma-channel no yung energies ng mga Pilipino. So take for example in this ano no in this cartoon no in this uh, 1899. So this was ano no uh, lumabas ito sa Bo Boston no. Uh, this was in 1899. Look at ano no how how sports no uh, demonstrate na din demonstrate dito il yung illustration na from savages naging ano no naging baseball athlete yung yung mga native so in a way it was a disciplinary no yung yung pag-introduce ng sports was a type of disciplinary instruments no of pacification so dumating din no yung YMCA sa sa Pilipinas di ba yung YMCA at itong YMCA na pinamumunuan ni Elwood Brown ay meron silang tinatawag na philosophy no yung muscular christianity no or muscular christianity so kailangan spirituality is equated with a uh, strong fit body so para rin yung ito sa mga ano no so yung YMCA itinayo no itinayo yung building sa sa Pilipinas no Kung initially may mga ano diyan no may mga uh, katabi niya yung ano no katabi niya yung mga baseball uh, field no and then merong swimming pool sa loob no so so para sa mga Amerikano ang baseball was ano no a way to to build no uh, capacity building no for the Filipinos. So, yan, uh, so even sa ano no yung pagti-training, no pagti-training ng mga mga ano ng mga 
mga ethnolinguistic groups, may mga taga Baguio, no? uh, sa, sa larangan ng baseball. So eventually, the transformation no, was facilitated. No? So from savages, we have athletic, streamlined bodies, no? ready for ano, no? ready for self-government. No? So it is also through public education that that sports, no? that, that, that the, the rationality and the values of sports were taught. No? Papansinin natin, no? uh, when architects, no? when colonial architects designed no? the school complexes, no? uh, particularly the works of William Parsons, uh, yung mga gabaldon schoolhouses, it was, ano, no? parte siya ng ano, no? yung building, kasama niya yung field, no? talaga nakaprescribe yung ball field, no? yung play field, playground, as a as an important part no and in public education so uh, uh, in 1904 in particular nagkaroon ng inter ano no inter school no inter school uh, competition no in terms of sports no uh, na pinamunuan ng uh, bureau of education bureau of education pa noon no? so these are ano no so from barrio so from barrios to to the ano no to to the cities may mga ano no may mga prescribed na playground talagang talagang naka-entrench no as early as the ano no uh, childhood no yung yung values of of sports no? so but of course the, the sports that we have were basically american no american sports and these are these american sports no were symbols of of modernity no so even women no would participate no in in sports competition so if we are to look back, no, dun sa, di ba, ang, ang, yung sinakop tayo ng Amerikano, no, ne, uh, nireplan ang Maynila, no, so it was replan, no, to, to reflect uh, that the Manila, no, is a new colonial tropical city, no, so it's an extension of American empire. So kailangan ng mga buildings dito, no, uh, malalaki, magaganda, neoclassical, no? yung mala, mala Washington, D.C. No? So, uh, pinapunta si Burnham dito no? para iplano nga yung Maynila no? according to the City Beautiful uh, movement. Yung City Beautiful aims to recreate no? a city no? that is conducive to civic life. No? Kung, kung babalikan natin yung Burnham plan no? na idinisenyo ni Daniel H. Burnham, no? si Burnham, pinangalan sa kanya yung ano no yung Burnham Park sa Baguio uh, pinrescribe niya no na ang city na ano no may mga play fields no may mga play fields open play fields uh, mga nine no nine na play fields sa sa Maynila sa pagpaplano ng Maynila kung makikita natin dito sa if we are to look at this ano no this this plan this is Loneta no uh, this is Loneta it's supposed to be the uh, location no, of our capital buildings no uh, na monumenta at katabi niya ay play fields no play fields saan na mga play fields na to buhay pa yan no so nagkaroon tayo ng mga ano no, no, ng i think mga nine no play fields all over manila no because these are breeding spaces and these are opportunities for recreation and civic life no to flourish. No? So, ito. Ito yung actually yung nakikita nating playfield number one no? and playfield number two is inside no? uh, the Philippine Normal uh, Philippine Normal School. No? Philippine Normal School pa noon. No? So, talagang sa, ano, no? sa pagtitrain ng kaguruan, tinuturuan din yung virtues ng ng sports, no, baseball. Pero purus ano, no, American sports, no. So even in the University of the Philippines, so the training, no, of the body. This is the the, the University of the Philippines in in Manila, no. So meron din swimming pool, no. Talagang uh, no, no. So apart from ano, no, apart from apart from open fields, so may mga ano, no, educational institutions, no, like. Uh, the University of Santo Tomas, no? uh, inintroduce nila yung, ano, no? yung physical education no? in their uh, higher education curriculum. No? They built no? a gymnasium designed by uh, architect Fernando Ocampo in the Art Deco style. So 
yung yung gym na ito ay parte na ng mas malaking development. So tinayuan siya ng ng ano no ng oh, buhay pa itong ano yung yung main structure pero tinayuan na siya ngayon ng uh, ng mga dormitory sa taas. So it was expanded. So ito yung ano no. So mapapansin natin no that, that the 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 material no the material of uh, early gymnasiums no, and sporting facilities was reinforced concrete because reinforced concrete was the ano no the material of modernity no in fact when we designed nga yung yung stadium natin no yung first stadium natin as early as 1924 it was envisioned in reinforced concrete because we were inspired no by the ano no Osaka no yung yung nung hineld yung Far Eastern Games sa Osaka na inspired tayo to build our own stadium and that stadium no yung sa Osaka was the first reinforced concrete stadium in Asia no so sumunod tayo doon so ito yung ano no ito yung gymnasium it's an open no it's an open uh, space no papansin na natin yung gymnasium it's a space of spectatorship no it's open no and uh, the spaces are flexible no pag sinabi na flexible it can host no several events so yun ang maganda sa ano no y- yung mga enclosed spaces na ganito yung mga gymnasiums they are capable of being transformed no based on on a particular sporting events no so the bureau of public education no na, syempre na, nagkaroon ng mga inter inter uh, scholastic meet no as early as 1938 no which is actually the forerunner of the palarong pambansa no so with this ano no palipat-lipat ito yearly palipat-lipat sila ng mga probinsya and uh, this event no uh, triggered or ano no stimulated no the construction of uh, of sporting facilities no in in the provinces no in the regions no? so yeah, one of the important, no, one of the important uh, event, no, uh, that birthed international sporting events, no, was the Manila Carnival. So dito nagsimula yung Far Eastern Championship Games, no, na pinasimulan nung tagawai MCA, no, na si Elwood Brown, no. So uh, they intend to make, kasi we are part of the American Empire, so parang gusto nila maging sentro tayo ng modern sports no so nagimbita sila ng uh, ng mga ano no atleta mula sa Japan sa China so initially tatlo lang yung ano no mga bansang nag naglalaban-laban no sa sa Far Eastern Championship Games so sinimulan nito noong 1908 bilang parte ng Manila Carnival no alam niyo Manila Carnival this is a, a colonial spectacle no so diyan ginaganap yung mga yung, yung yung beauty contest no uh, but on the side there is also sporting events no so for the Manila Carnival in, in particular they built no a temporary hippodrome no which could accommodate the different uh, sports no uh, for the ano no so ang tawag nga natin sa Far Eastern Games no ay, ay Asian Olympics no pero nag nagalit yata yung ano no yung, yung sa Europe kasi in, inappropriate yung term na Olympics so kanila daw yun no? so ito yung mga ano ito yung mga unang atletang pumunta dito so uh, this international event would trigger no the creation of a permanent no of a permanent venue no which will become the the Rizal Memorial field no tawag dun Rizal Memorial Field so uh, pin, ano to no it it was participated by athletes from Japan no China no and the Philippines i think this one kasama yung the Netherlands no Netherlands kasi yung Indonesia was part of the Netherlands so it was ayun Java no so Japan China Java and Philippine Islands so it was no uh, the festival a, a festival of goodwill Okay. So by 1924, no? Uh, by 1924, there was a, 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 a movement, no, to to raise 500,000, no? 500,000 dollars no? for the construction of a stadium, no, to be known as the Jose Rizal Memorial Stadium. No? 
So it it was planned to to be completed no, in time for the Far Eastern Championship Games for 1925. However, no, hindi ito natuloy because of uh, lack of funding. So going back to the site, no, going back to the site, titingnan natin again yung Burnham Plan. So this sa Burnham Plan, yung tinatayuan ngayon ng Rizal Memorial Stadium is actually part part of uh, Park number one, no. So the uh, no, no, By the way, the the site now was chosen because of its uh, proximity, no, to to the Tranvia, to the to 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 the sea. Because pwedeng pwedeng gamit no for ano no yung mga water sports yung ano yung yung Manila Bay, no. So may, there exists nga in that area. So this. Pero the, ang problematic dito, when you look at the site, it was, uh, ano, no? uh, looking at this aerial photo, it was, uh, it's a wetland. No? It's a wetland. So, pero looking at this, kita nyo ba yung ano, cursor ko? You will see the meron ng ano, ano, uh, track, no? track, track oval. So, here, no? so, today this is the Lagoon of the Manila Sioux. No? Uh, okay. So problematic yung ano kaya ngayon binabaha pa rin yung ano no yung yung site ng uh, Rizal no Memorial Stadium. So uh, it was part of the Harrison ano no Harrison Park no Harrison Park in Pasay. So adjacent din siya dun sa uh, race track no sa Pasay. Okay? So that's the Harrison Park no. So napili itong lugar na to na pagtayuan ng ano no ng ng stadium no because of its proximity to to the transport network no ayan so unti-unti nang nabubuo no yung yung mga yung mga buildings dito so looking at the map so uh, so napapaligiran ito ng mga estero so tignan natin yung ano so ito yung ano no ito yung plano no plano so by the way no yung Harrison yung mismong Harrison Plaza ngayon no yung mall ay actually parte no nung nung ano no nung, nung sporting facilities before no so kung makikita natin dito sa aerial photograph no na na-develop na so tinabunan no it was very expensive na tinabunan ng lupa it, it, it was flattened no to make way for a for a baseball field no practicing baseball field so ito no in this aerial photograph we see no the 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 main the pioneering buildings the the tennis stadium the baseball the the track and field and the natatorium now we call the ano no uh, a stadium uh, meant for swimming pool as for swimming as natatorium no? so this is the ano no so wala pa yung cultural center so it's still empty no talagang ano no so the ano no kasi why do we need a stadium in the first place? No? Because to be a, to become a world city, you must have the sporting facility, the cultural facilities like theater, no, and the opera houses like the Metropolitan Theater and uh, monumental, no, government buildings. So kasama yan sa pagiging sibilisadong ciudad, no. So ito yung ano, no? ito yung Diba ang ganda-ganda ng ano no ang ganda-ganda naman. So, makikita natin it looking at this picture alone uh, during its heyday, it it must have been no o inspiring and monumental kasi yun lang ang makikita mo sa sa ano no sa vastness ng space, no? Okay? So, these are the buildings. So, mamaya titingnan natin no kung paano namin inayos no yung yung Rizal Memorial Coliseum. So itinatayo na yung Rizal Memorial Coliseum. So sino ba ang nagtayo nit ang nagdesenyo nito si Juan Arellano. So si Juan Arellano ay consulting architect na nag-aral sa Amerika at master siya ng neoclassical style. Pag sinabi natin neoclassical style, ito yung estilo ng arkitektura na may mga columns no na parang mala templo no Greek Greco-Roman no. Yung makikita natin sa Washington DC. So talagang uh, gamay niya ang ang lingwahe no, ng ng neoclassical style pero kung makikita natin no so 
makikita rin natin no, na si Juan Arellano was a postcard boy. No? Postcard boy for the independence movement. Bakit? No? Kasi uh, nakapag-aral siya sa Amerika. No? Nakapag-aral siya sa Amerika uh, uh, para makapag-aral siya sa Amerika, tumakas siya. Eh. Nag-away sila ng kapatid niya and then tumakas siya. Uh, at nag-participate siya dun sa Jamestown Exposition. No? Kasi nung panahon na yun, no? yung panahon na yun, uh, ang mga Pilipino ay dinidisplay. No? Pinapakita na barbaric tayo to justify nga yung colonialism as a force of civilization. No? So parang ibibigyan tayo ng education, civilization. So justification yun na ang Amerika is tutoring us no? uh, for self-government and democracy. So si Juan Arellano, he allowed himself to become, na nagpanggap siya na wild man sa Jamestown. No? But eventually, he was able to, to surpass no? uh, that state. No? Naging, na, nakapag-aral siya sa Amerika at naging renowned uh, architect siya. No? So pagbalik niya sa Manila, na, halos lahat ng makikita nating building, mga kapitolyo sa Pilipinas ay dinisenyo ni Juan Arellano, including post office, no? Jones Bridge. No? So bakit kasama si Juan Arellano dito kasi si Juan Arellano he will denounce no siya, siya rin yung nagdesenyo by the way ng Metropolitan Theater he will denounce he will denounce no yung neoclassical style in favor of streamlined modern no? ano yung streamlined modern kasi nga di ba meron merong ano na no, fascination no sa bodily transformation so kung titingnan natin Ten, no? yung, yung transformation na to yung building mismo ng Rizal Coliseum ay parang katawan no streamlined lean machine no machine like no machine like no tinanggal yung mga excesses ng decoration ng neoclassical style so in a way parang ano no parang nirereject ni Juan Arellano yung colonialism no sa building na to. Remember, this was built in 1934. Huh? Uh, at the height of the neoclassical style. So, he was departing from that because he wanted the Philippines to become independent. Huh? So, ano nga ba yung ano? Maririnig ba natin? Yung 1930s, uh, naririnig ba natin? Dynamism, na. modernity, yes, sir. were premium. So, ikinukumpara nga yan. The idea of machine-like human perfection became a kind of fetish in the 1930s. This was an era of mass displays in which hundreds, sometimes thousands of bodies acted like synchronized mechanical components in a streamlined production process. So kasi yung, yung ganyan, uh, it Nowhere trains the body to was be this fascination no? with the notion of the body, strength, power, and movement coming together more evident than in Lenny Riefenstahl's Olympia, a 1936 Nazi propaganda film. Such imagery is the very same aesthetic that Busby Berkeley's musicals sought to orchestrate in his kaleidoscopic compositions of bodies. The age of Art Deco was dominated by an idea that human beings could be made as perfect as the machines that surrounded them. More than just a design style, streamlining is an ideological pursuit linked to eugenics. Eugenics wanted to redesign society and the industrial designers of that time believed in the eugenic progress to manufacture the future perfect form. A more streamlined body, a more streamlined lifestyle. Eugenics seeks to apply the known laws of heredity so as to prevent the degeneration of the race. The eugenics movement found its most appalling manifestation in Nazi Germany. This so the 1930s no, was, uh, was a search for bodily perfection. No? So, Yun. So, kaya sports become a, a cult, no? Parang, it's like a religion, no? So, 
going back now so here makikita natin that the buildings are in the Rizal Memorial ano no sports complex para rel no this attainment of lean uh, simplified bodies no so yung tinanggal yung mga excesses no di ba pansinin natin they are streamlined aerodynamic no okay so uh, by the way na by the way so di ano nabuo pala yung ano nabuo pala yung funding nung ano no nung Rizal Memorial Stadium sa so, pamamagitan ng contribution at saka ng sweepstakes no? So ito yung ano no ito yung uh, itinata I, actually muntik ng hindi ano no hindi matapos ito pero um effort sila really to na, na matapos ito because it is a source of national pride because at the same time remember that this is ano no pre-commonwealth no pre-commonwealth so this the hosting no of uh, the tent no far eastern no uh, games far eastern championship games provided no uh, an opportunity for the Filipinos to demonstrate their ability to organize an international event so when they can organize an international event then pwede na rin tayo maging ano no magkaroon mag-organize ng sariling gobyerno no so and this was ano no the construction of this building was led by the Philippine Athlet Amateur Athletic Federation no and who is the ano no and who is the head no of the Philippine uh, Amateur Athletic Federation it was no Manuel Quezon no so so ito na yung mga buildings na ito no so kasi bakit ko ini sinasabi yun kasi itong sports infrastructure na to triggered our independence no so, so kinonek ko siya sa ano ba, ba, kasi kasi nga it demonstrated na that we have surpassed no yung yung imagined savagery no ng mga Amerikano sa atin no we're able to become athletes no so so these are the buildings so these are the primary uh, architecture no of that time and by the way no uh, ito yung ano no yung yung Rizal Memorial Stadium diyan unang ginamitan ng mga underground passages no so batay dito sa sa news na ito so may mga subway diyan no na i don't think hindi, hindi na natin nakikita ngayon pero meron diyan so this is the actual photograph no of the far eastern games in 1934 no it was well attended no and it was a source of uh, uh, colonial pride no so pero titingnan natin sa display ng mga flag so it was uh, ano no it was participate participated by uh, ano no uh, the, ano uh, East Indies no yung yung Indonesia Japan and the Republic of China and then look at our flag no so it's still under the United States so but no si si Manuel Quezon ang nag-open ng ano no ng 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 games no so of course we know that one year later no one year later the philippine commonwealth will be uh, created no with manuel quezon as the president okay so i'll just show you pictures of uh, pero tingnan yung mga seats no solihia pa no it's made of wood and solihia so but uh, there was a uh, no a huge crowd no uh, pati sa mga ano no pati sa mga fences na tumayo sila doon no so ito yung mga ano natin yung mga atleta no so boxing it's a it's a boxing team so yan so it it had its own glory no uh, so yung mga ano no collegiate uh, at athletics no ginanap diyan so it's quite memorable no yan so even yung mga boxing so it's really a versatile space no so ano pa yung mga apart from the Rizal Stadium no meron pang mga ano no uh, sports infrastructure if we consider ano no horse racing as a sport no so we have Art Deco no yung Art Deco Santa Ana racetrack and San Lazaro no which was also designed no using the streamlined no architecture of the period no pag sinabi nating streamlined ano siya medyo machine like 
no? Na kinokopya niya yung ocean liners because it's it's the ano, no? it's the symbol of progress, modernity and uh, cutting edge technology, no? Aerodynamism. So this is the San Lazaro race track, no? So, yun, bilugan din, no? Me medyo uh, rounded corners, no? And it's it clad in, ano, no? partly meron yung kanyang uh, staircase is clad in glass, no? And this is the Santa Ana race track, no? So, wala na to. So, notice also streamlining, no? Streamline design. And uh, for the colonial, ano, no? For the colonial expat, no? They had, no? Uh, polo, no polo clubs. No, for example, the Manila Polo Club. No? So, by the way, the the Manila Polo Club, no, which which is in 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 today's Pasay, no. Uh, ngayon, itong Manila Polo Club is the site now of the Coneta Astrodome and the the ano, no, uh, sports complex no, of Pasay City. So we have also uh, ano no. Uh, clubhouses no for polo no? like the for a tamarao polo club no? uh, this is in paranaque and uh, again pansinin natin the the, the, ano, no? the style no the style was really streamlined no so which parallels the the, the body no the streamlined body no? so we, we have the high ally building the sky room no? so and i don't know So, but ano, no, we saw, no, we, we saw the the the, ano, the destruction, no, the destruction of many infrastructure, no, during the uh, Japanese and uh, Japanese occupation and the liberation of the Philippines no, from from Japanese forces. So there was massive bombing. In fact, the Rizal Memorial Complex, no, was uh, was a battleground, no, no. So it's it was really the last. Uh, stand no ng mga hapon no napanood nyo ba yung ano napanood nyo ba yung mga footages no uh, archival footages so let's see no yung 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 ano no yung yung sports infrastructure ng Manila prime ano no the foremost infrastructure of Manila being destroyed no uh, during the liberation of Manila in 1945 <laughs> suburbs of Manoa, designed for ease and rest and relaxation. We saw Memorial Park, the baseball stadium. But another kind of game is being played now, where one error means out, and death keeps the score. Okay. Sorry. So yan, so nakita natin ang ano no, na ito yung last stand no ng mga Hapon no. Kaya medyo na, na ano siya no, nasira siya. Pero again, it was refunction no after the war it was because ano na sporting infrastructures no are very versatile no, very versatile kasi they they have a, a, a huge you know, expand, expanse of space. No? Kaya gagamitin siya. Di ba ginagamit nga siya sa evacuation? So, tignan natin dito yung, yung, ano, no? yung, 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 yung field. No? May mga tents. No? So, by the way, no? yung after, immediately after the war, hindi masyadong nasira yung, ano, no? yung Coliseum. No? So, ginawa itong uh, opisina ng Red Cross. No? So, Actually, hindi nalalayo, no? Hindi nalalayo yung role ng ano, no, ng Rizal Coliseum ngayon, no? 'di ba? It's a COVID facility and noon, medicalized din ng kanyang function, no, bilang ano, no, uh, Red Cross, no. Ito yung opisina ng Red Cross doon. Tapos, of course, ginamit din yung space, no, to entertain, no, uh, the troops, no. So ito yung ano no inaayos yung yung arena. Inaayos yung arena para para sa isang 
uh, event. No? Okay. So, the Battle of Manila destroyed, no? destroyed uh, many, no? many buildings, many heritage structures in, in the Philippines. No? But after the war, uh, the Philippines no? became no? a new nation. No? As a new nation, it will adapt a new architecture no? that, will, uh, that will be symbolic no? of its modern aspiration and progress. No? So, Siyempre, di ba, na, na, nakita natin, nasira yung, ano, na, nasira yung mga major infrastructure. So, may mga temporary, no? temporary buildings no? na itinayo yung mga Amerikano. So, these are military uh, structures no? uh, that, that, that are versatile. No? So, ito yung tinatawag natin concept hut. No? So, this concept hut, for example, no? in, in the University of the Philippines, no? we, we have it, no? Yung concept hat, barrel shape siya. And then, uh, uh, it's, it had prefabricated uh, metal components. Kaya madali siyang itayo. No? So, take for example, the concept hat became, no? itinayo yung gym ng, ng, ng University of the Philippines. But it was not the gym meant for the, the college, no? the university. No? Because... UP no was a military garrison no the, the site of UP immediately after was a military garrison so itong UP gym namin ngayon is actually a war architecture no war related infrastructure so even yung UP theater no uh, was ano no uh, a concept hut no so yan na ngayon pinatungan lang so here is the University of the Philippines nung itinayo. So, naiwan ng mga Amerikano yung concept at pero ginamit pa rin ng mga ng, ano, ng, ng administrate, administrator ng UP. No? So, take for example, this is the UP gym no? in the 1960s uh, through, through this aerial photograph. So, it's actually still intact. No? So, but uh, that site, no? uh, tinayuan siya ng uh, bagong building. No? And in the 1980s, minub no yung yung building to another site yung yung tinatawag namin CHK uh, complex no College of Human Kinetics complex no so nung ano nung 1980s dinismantle siya kasi nga sabi ko sa inyo prefabricated yung concept dinismantle siya at nilipat sa site ngayon na malapit ngayon sa Commonwealth Avenue so ito yung plano ito yung plano nung ano so ano siya no barrel vault no at merong ventilator. So, ang laki-laki ng space na nakikreate na, na, ng concept hut, pe, ano, no, uh, pero kailangan mo ng ano, good ventilation no? kasi kailangan mo ng, ano, no, ng continuous flow of air. Kasi at this time, wala tayong access no, sa air conditioning. Kaya makikita nyo dito, ang ventilator nito ay passive. No? Nandito sa itaas. So, it sucked out the warm air. So by convection, no? So kailangan dapat pag-aralan natin bakit yung mga ano no yung mga 'di ba ngayon, no? Ang isa all over the Philippines, no? Uh, napakadami natin na we have a, a number of multi-purpose building, no? And this multi-purpose building are congressional ano no initiatives, no? Binigay ni Congressman na ganyan sa barangay na ganyan. But mainit siya kasi hindi pinag-aralan yung technique of ventilation. So, uh, anyway, so this is the UP gym. So, nung naabutan ko siya, medyo, kasi nga, 1940s pa siya, it was in, in bad shape. No? So, uh, I was appointed as university architect no, of uh, UP Diliman. No? So, one of my tasks was to modernize no? uh, in 2008 the UP gym no kasi tumutulo ang init-init so we we had to ano no we had to uh, implement no uh, uh, a rehabilitation and modernization program so kung makikita natin yung ano pinalitan namin yung ano no yung yung court no uh, pinalitan namin ng maple yung 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 gitna tapos inayos namin yung tulo and we made it versatile no at saka of course Many of the, the gymnasiums, no, even yung Rizal Memorial, suffer from, from ano, no, 
bad lighting no so kaya hindi ma-appreciate yung ano no yung yung spectacle ng sport kasi nga hindi enough yung lighting so yun uh, we had to ano no we had to to use no uh, more energy efficient lighting system and we took advantage no of uh, of skylights no? and then of course i we pay, I painted, no? I, I, I prescribed a, a painting uh, color scheme no? that reflects the color of the University of the Philippines. So also in 1949, no? yung Blue Eagle, Blue Eagle Gym, no? so yung Ateneo Gym was constructed. No? So again, the design is Quon Set Hat. No? It was designed by uh, Hines Rivera who also designed the campus of uh, of, ano, no, of Ateneo. So, there was a time that from EDSA, you will see uh, ano, no, the, the Blue Eagle Gym. No? So, makikita nyo yung napakalaking eagle. No? Ngayon, hindi mo na makikita because it's uh, ano, no, masyado ng dense ang ano. So, ang ganda ng ano, no? so you will still see no, those uh, structural support, no? the curving structural support. So this is the Blue Eagle Gym. So in 1953, now uh, we hosted no the Philippine International Fair as a, I don't know, as a dry run no for our hosting of the second Asian game. So ano ba yung Philippine International Fair? So uh, nagkaroon tayo, nag-invite tayo ng iba't ibang bansa para mag-display ng kanilang kultura sa pamamagitan ng iba't ibang exhibition at, at sa mga pavilion na itinayo sa Luneta. So, the event was meant to, to showcase that the Philippines is a new nation state and we have uh, recovered no, from the ruins of war and we are here to participate no, in the global arena no, and we are part no, of uh, the family of nations. No? Okay. So 1953 sinimulan din i-rehabilitate no yung Rizal Memorial Coliseum no Rizal Memorial Sports Complex no para nga sa hosting nung second Asian game yung first uh, Asian games was held in in India no? so it was no again a source of national pride it's the coming out of the Philippines as a new nation no in the aftermath of World War II no that we have recovered from the ruins of war. Huh? So, na ready na tayo. So, we are part no, of a of a, no, no, of a family of nations. So, we are part of the free uh, world. No? So, so, the, ano, no, so, ang nagbukas nung games was uh, Ramon Magsaysay. No? And, uh, by the way, no, th this event no, was the first time we used the technology of television. No? to broadcast no uh, the different sporting events okay let's watch the the event no uh, you know. in 1954 manila was host to a gathering so, natin, yung, yung, from ano, over the stadium in the, no? Asian the stadium Day. is over 1000 athletes a, ano, from no? a source of national pride learned no? at first hand diba? that peoples can live and strive in peace so pag nagpatayo tayo ng, ano, ng, ng provincial sports complex it is also the pride no, of the, the, the region, of the province. Okay, so, ang dami, ang dami nang naganap no, sa Rizal Coliseum. No? Uh, hindi ko na i-mention. So, from, um, you know, it's so versatile that pwedeng, ano, pwedeng concert, no? pwede siyang concert hall. Ginanap din dyan yung Holiday on Ice at ginanap din dyan yung uh, bullfight. No? So it, ito yung mga ticket no, na na-recover namin no, from, from my research. So at ang highlight dyan yung ano, exhibition uh, bout no, ni Rocky Marciano and the performance of the Beatles in 1966. So 
uh, of course, ang daming ano, ang daming event. So, ang daming ano, no, palarong Pilipino nung panahon ni Marcos at ano, no, uh, Southeast Asian Games, no, among others. So, balik tayo sa 1950s, no? So, yung 1950s was the age of uh, space exploration. Kaya nga it tinawag na space age, no? So, Ano ang consequence ng Space Age apart from ang pelikula natin, puro science fiction? Yun, no? Ang mga buildings look, they look, ano, no? Spaceship-like, no? They were about to launch, no? In outer space. So, kaya, ayan, yung domical, no? Yung domical structure na yan, for example, in UP, no? So, reinforced concrete, no? Was uh, considered as, at this time, no? Was a plastic material capable of being a shape no into different uh, geometric forms no so buildings at this time became some sort of a sculpture no pero parang pluck out no from a science fiction film or novel no so ngayon no yung Araneta Coliseum no itinayo nung 1958 at natapos yata to nung 1959 no so it rest on uh, so ito ito ay centerpiece no ng development no ng Quezon City no uh, particularly nung Cubao at itong Araneta Coliseum was considered as the biggest domed coliseum in the world no from 1960 to 1963 so may meron tayong ano no for that no so the ano no the building is made of so it's the world biggest dome no at, at, at a given time so it was uh completed no uh, in 1959 so it, it is composed of a reinforced concrete na cylindrical no and then this is topped by uh, an aluminum dome no so ito yung plano niya no ito yung plano niya so naaalala niyo ba ang Araneta Coliseum ang dami ring mga no, no mga pangyayari diyan no and it was no uh, one of the highlights architectural highlights of the 1950s because it was an engineering feat no at that time so empty pa siya pero ngayon because nga uh, buildings no from the 50s tend to be dilapidated uh, it received no a, a rehabilitation no and it is now known as the smart no uh, araneta uh, coliseum smart no uh, Yan. Yan. So ang ganda-ganda. So nandiyan din yung ano no, yung mga boxing match no. Uh, PBA no. So also in 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 the 1960s, 1916 uh, in the 1960s makita din natin yung isang iconic building na mukhang spaceship na, na gymnasium no. Uh, ito yung St. Minild Hall in this is the ano no, the the gymnasium of La Salle Green Hills, no? So, di ba? Space Age, no? Space Age ang look niya. It was designed also by Hines Rivera, no? The same architect who designed the Blue Eagle Gym. So, very UFO, di ba? So, uh, di ba? We know Manyosa, no? Manyosa as the designer of the uh, Coconut Palace, no, and the Edsa Shrine, no. In the 1960s, he he designed, no, together with his brothers, no, the Manyosa brothers, they designed a gymnasium for San Beda, no, uh, which is very science fiction like, no, but it it has a huge, no, uh, space, no. Sa yun yung sa sa Cebu naman sa University of San Carlos, they had this, no, uh, beautiful gym, no. At alam nyo ba, nung 1962, no, nakikita nyo itong building na to. So, this was the proposal of uh, Felipe Mendoza. No? Felipe Mendoza is also a renowned architect who designed the Batasang Pambansa. No? So, makikita natin dyan, space age pa rin ng ano, na inspiration nung building na to. But what is this building? No? This is the, supposed to be the replacement no, of the Rizal Memorial Coliseum. So, in the 1960s, there was a plan to demolish the Rizal Memorial Coliseum to make way for a larger venue. No? Pero unfortunately, this plan uh, did not take off. No? 
And then in ano in 1969, no? So yung mga city nagtatayo na sila ng sarili nilang sports complex, no? So take for example, this 4 million sports complex, no? Uh, also known as Rizal Complex, no, in Marikina. Pero today it's known as the Marikina Sports Complex. It introduced, no, the industrialized construction method, no, when it employed Uh, precast, pre-stress structural system. So it was erected in in two months. No, usually this type of building, uh, without using these new technologies, would take about one year to one and a half years to complete. No, but for this uh, the building, pero ngayon parang di na siya natin na siya appreciate ano, kasi luma na. Uh, this building was in fact awarded no uh, in 1974 for being. Uh, an outstanding precast system no? by the US-based Pre-Stress Institute. So this is in Marikina. So even yung ano no? even the facade no you have a modernist no a bar relief no uh, that depicts a different uh, sports no uh, prevalent in the Philippines. So in in the 1980s no so iba Madam Imelda Marcos, the apostle of the true, the good, and the beautiful, no? the minister of human settlements, and the minister of uh, and the governor of Metropolitan Manila, no? created the University of Life, no? and one of the ano, no, um, one of the building of that vocational school was this brutalist building, no? which later on. Ultra, no, naging, uh, ano, naging field sport. So, pag sinabi natin brutalist, brutalist, it's a building. Kung makikita niyo yung works ni Luxin, na gawa, yari sa, ano, no, na, sa CCP yung gawa ni Luxin, yari sa raw concrete, ano, na unpainted, basta ano lang siya, raw concrete, yun ang tinatawag natin brutalism. No? Unpainted because we want to valorize no, uh, the, the very texture no, of, of raw concrete. So that's it's a brutalist building, but this building. No? So international hosting no, of uh, sporting events would yield instant rehabilitation no, for our old old buildings. No, so it was uh, rehabilitated to become uh, ano, no, this an, ano, no, a venue no, for for ano, no, for the 2019 uh, Sea Games. So di ba instant? No? So, naging high-tech na siya. So, ngayon, maganda yung ano, no? instead na magtatayo ka ng bagong building, why not refurbish no? and retrofit existing buildings? No? Because buildings uh, such as this, no? and even Rizal Memorial Coliseum, have historical value. No? So, may potential siya no? for redevelopment. So, eh, when I was university architect, I had the opportunity to design, no? Uh, the College of Human Kinetic Sports Complex. So apart from ano, no, designing the National Science Complex of UP, uh, ano, no, I, I, we, we had this no, on the drawing board. No? But unfortunately, because of the lack of funding, uh, hindi natuloy. But we were very eager no, to, to do this. So ang ginagawa namin, paano ba kami nakakuha ng pera? No? So kumakatok kami sa ano Congress literally no uh, kasi di ba at that time yung may mga congressional initiative they would sponsor a building for example at this time we were able to to get uh, a pledge you know from from ano no, from speaker Belmonte no, to give us 65 million to jump start no our swimming pool pero unfortunately because of politics no Uh, di ba naging illegal nga yung pork barrel so nabawi sa amin yung ano no? so but this was uh, our proposal for the UP Sports Arena medyo ambitious kami no so this is our uh, basketball court our swimming pool no ang ang isa lang na, na, na natuloy no na project namin was the track and field and football oval no so So ito siya, no? It, ito siya. We So we had we, we already had uh, So ito yan. So ang aming ano diyan, ang aming yung green diyan ay artificial turf, no? And then we have uh, 
So ito yan, before, ganyan siya. So pinademolish namin yung existing grandstand kasi nga yung track oval, hindi siya world, world standard. No? Uh, pinademolish namin kasi pag pinalaki namin yung, ano, yung track, uh, talagang kakainin yung grandstand. So syempre, kailangan namin ano, no, at par no, with, with the global standard. Kaya we had to sacrifice the, the grandstand. So ito siya. No? Uh, during its construction. No? Ayan, nililay na yung, ano, no, yung artificial turf. Uh, why artificial turf? Because they are easy to maintain. No? So, another ano, no, important uh, buildings no, of recent memory is the Mall of Asia Arena. It's also a versatile. Ano, no? uh, bakit siya ano, ay? No? It was uh, designed by ano, no, an international consulting firm. No? Uh, it's Arquitectonica no? with uh, Ho uh, Jose Shaoling as the counterpart ar architect. No? So, para siyang symbolic eye. So, and this is ano, no, of recent memory also. No? This is the uh, Philippine Arena. No? So, the Philippine Arena... So I will read from my ano no, from my forthcoming book ano yung Philippine Arena. So it 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 was it hailed as one of the world's largest no uh, indoor venue no the Philippine Arena at Ciudad Victoria. So a 140 hectare tourism enterprise zone in Bukaw and Santa Maria. So the building is about uh, 15 stories high no with the multi-purpose indoor arena, which can accommodate up to 55,000 spectators. So, tries the uh, capacity no, of Araneta Coliseum by volume. No? So, it was uh, no, designed by, by Populus, no? a, a global architectural design firm specializing in stadium and arena. So the building no, took inspiration from the national tree, Nara. No? So Nara, symbolic of endurance, strength, and spirit. No? Uh, spirit of the Filipino people. No? And it was covered by a canopy pattern, no? abstracted from touch roof of traditional uh, Filipino bahay kubo, no? So, yan. Tapos, isa pa, in, in, tapos, it was also featured, no, in, in Discovery Channel's Man-Made Marvel, no, in 2013. So, it's, it's, ano, no, one of the largest, no, uh, indoor, no, arena in the world. So, we also have, no, uh, a stone throw away, no, with all those uh, I don't know, uh, interesting roof, no? roof line, the Philippine Sports Stadium, no? or also known as New Era University Stadium. No? So it's a football and track stadium, uh, uh, 100. So the stadium was built right next to the Philippine Arena. So the stadium is the largest football stadium in the Philippines with a maximum seating capacity of 25,000. Okay? So another remarkable no, uh, sports architecture of recent memory is the 5 billion peso New Clark City Sports Hub, no? originally conceptualized as the Philippine Olympic City. No? It is a haven for athletes and sports aficionado nestled in the belt of the Clark City National uh, government administrative center. So this is once a desolate parcel of land, no? Uh, it with uh, no, no, with a two thousand seater aquatic center and an, an athletic stadium with twenty thousand uh, seating capacity. So the stadium, no, yung stadium na yan, no, nakikita natin, is derived from yung yung form niya, no, was derived from the adjacent volcano, the Mount Pinatubo, no? its ridge roof line resembles a crater opening towards the sky and articulated by a series of curved canopies. As a homage, as a homage to the site, the materiality of the walls and the post was a concrete mixture made up of lahar and volcanic deposit, an abundant resource no? quarried from the site. No? So the main entrance was defined by frames of glass uh, okay? 
the gray and orange seats. No? The gray and orange seats are randomly arranged in tiers as a pixelated, no? parang pixels that depict the lava flow. No? So, sculptural pillars, no? yung poste niya, no? uh, that carry the tiered slab were painted orange as visual accent suggestive of the Philippine sunset. So, another, ano, no? another important I don't know, experimentation no, in terms of form uh, that that was uh, one of the highlights no, of the I don't know, Sea Games of 2019 was a bamboo structure, no, the Polo Pavilion no, in Calatagan, Batangas. No? So it was an experimentation in the potentials of bamboo as a modern no, contemporary material. So this is the Polo Pavilion designed by Sangai Architects. No? So it's composed of uh, ano, no, parang a frame no? and it's it's a homage to the Bahay Kubo. No? So pinapakita dito na yung yung ano no yung bamboo is not just no a poor man's timber no it can be uh, a sculptural and an, an architectonic experimentation. No? So Ano ba yung mga forthcoming, no? Ano ba yung mga forthcoming uh, sports venue, no? So for example, we have Sorsogon Coliseum, no? Or uh, Sorsogon uh, uh be, ano no? stadium, no? So inspired by uh, the the Coliseum of Rome, no? Sige, tingnan lang natin yung mga, siguro we expect this to finish by 2022, 2023. No? So, yan. So, it's under construction. So, in the north, no, in, in Lawag, under construction din yung uh, Ferdinand Marcos Stadium. No? It's designed by William T. No? So, ito yung ano niya, no? uh, ongoing construction. So ano nga ba to? Uh, I forgot. So I think it's UP, no? UP, no? UP in Dabao, no? The sports complex in in UP Dabao. So So we go now to ano no? Uh, may time pa ba tayo, no? Uh, we go now to how we were able to ano no? to rehabilitate no? the Rizal Coliseum. So kasi pag sinabi nating lumang building, we just dismiss it as demolish na lang natin 'yan. Uh, Kasi mas mura pang gumawa ng bagong building. But because it is a declared no, uh, historical site, no, so meron tayong responsibility no, sa, sa ating bansa na i-preserve ang, ang, ano, no, ang mga buildings na ganitong klase. Kahit luma sila, uh, makikita pa rin natin yung potential. So, miski sa mga probinsya natin, huwag natin i-dismiss. Pwede siyang... I rehabilitate pa rin. So, ito yung state na nakita natin. No? So, uh, doon sa Rizal Memorial Coliseum. Uh, of course, the ano, no, the Sea Games provided an opportunity for its uh, fast track, no, rehabilitation. So, but but of course, when when you embark no on on a project of historical magnitude, you have to do research, no. Tingnan niyo yung ano no, talagang sira yung drainage no nung nung building. So, may 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 ano doon, no? may swimming pool no doon sa canopy no? so we really had to to do research no in order to be faithful to the original intent of the architect no? okay so uh, modernization was the key no in 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 the rehabilitation so we had to to make the facility world class it should be piba 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 certified no it should be a flexible no a flexible venue no capable of hosting different types of of sporting events and even concerts no and performances so we all, well, but overall halos lahat shell na lang ang naiwan kasi we had to change the electrical system so we had to incorporate no uh, a new air conditioning system where do you place that no so ang lalaki ng machine noon so yun and even the acoustic properties had to be had to be ano no uh, had to be improved no so 
lighting, etc. So, yan. So, everything was removed. The chairs were also removed kasi kailangan retractable na yung seat. So, ano ba yung mga elements ng building? So, we had to remove no, yung mga ugly elements that do not belong no, to the original. So, we demolished certain parts no, that, that was added on and that compromises no, the, the integrity and authenticity of the building. No? So, we also did some scrapings no, in order to be faithful. So, we, we, we devised no, several color palette no, for the approval of our, our stakeholders. No? In this case, the Philippine Sports Commission. And they chose no, intelligently the gray uh, variant. No? So, ito, actually, tama sila kasi when we, when we saw no, a technicolor footage of the, of, the, of the complex, it was really gray gray tones no then we had to ano no we had to repair no several elements no the drainage so the building is very very sick no uh, may sick building syndrome siya so uh, may mga mold so we had to cure it because yung ano no water yung yung pag penetrate ng tubig because hindi na kaya ng drainage ng roof yung ano so nagkakaroon ng overflow and eventually this water is the source of uh, uh mold no at saka fungal growth so we had to to cure it no so so yan lilinis na inaayos na and we also no eventually uh we recovered no some some spaces and we converted it into a museum so that the building could could speak about no its history no so this and yung building also suffer uh, during flooding kaya siya may merong ano no zocalo no uh, nakikita nyo may parang boundary dyan para hindi papasok yung tubig sa loob. So, we had to solve it. No? Uh, we had to relocate that uh, parang flood barrier somewhere else. No? Because it's not giving justice to the beauty of the building. So, what we, this is what we, ano, no? uh, our treatment no? for the lobby. No? So, so, also we recovered some, ano, no? some, missing no? missing architectural detail like the, the ano, no? yung circular window which is a porthole window no uh, inspired by ocean liners no? so actually nawawala siya dito and we were able to recover it no? so nakatakip lang pala siya no? okay so everything that makes the building not beautiful we remove no and it's 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 not really giving justice no to the art deco aesthetics of, of, of the Rizal Memorial Coliseum. No? Okay? So, ito yung mga changes. No? So, ito na yung loob. So, we also, ano, no, yung, mga, yung mga antique na, ano, no, na blower sa taas, niretain lang namin because it gives ano, a layer of history to the building no? and it gives a certain level of authenticity tapos yung mga side lobbies they are very ugly <laughs> no? they are very ugly no? because as the ceiling makikita niyo yung mga tubo no sa mga ng mga toilet ay nakaputrod so we had to repipe them no repipe them and conceal them no now so ito na itsura niya uh, tinago namin no? tinago namin so even the terrazzo flooring, we had to restore them no, using the same techniques that was used in the 1930s. No? So, maganda, in the, uh, ano, from the very beginning, maganda yung building. No? It's a matter of removing lang the accumulated no, uh, addition no, throughout the decade. So, we were also amazed no, to, to look at this picture because the meeting the missing details were supplied by this picture na so nung una hindi namin alam bakit mag ganito tong poste nito no ito here na no? bakit ganito yung poste there, there must be something no there so nung nakita namin yung picture we had to recreate no the the lighting fixture no of that based on the picture so i had to sketch it no? and fabric so this is the before and this is the after no so there was the intention of the architect to use no real marble but but when we scraped the the, you know, the surfaces we we saw no an attempt for 
faux marbling. So so we use na lang no real marble na lang no uh, instead of a fake marble. So this was uh, okay. So by the way, if you want to know more no, about how we did it no, in a span of three months, no, you can watch it via YouTube. No? The title of the, the documentary is Rizal Revival. No? So we use uh, new equipments like, like the spider crane no? so that hindi na kami gagamit ng, ano, ng mga scaffolding. Kasi we had a tight schedule no? para, para magamit yung venue for the SEA Games. So we use... No? a lot of uh, new equipments, no? imported new equipment. So this is the toilet before. No? So we had to repipe everything. No? And this is the toilet now. I hope it's still the sa in the same state. No? Kasi today it's being used as a COVID ano, no? quarantine facility. Okay, that's the toilet. So we borrowed elements no? from the existing grill works to be integrated in the door design. So this is the before. Ayan. So talagang ano no, uh, uh, in ano in doing this no we had workers no more than 400 workers uh, working uh, in three shifts no just to beat the deadline. So so let's see uh, let's see the video. So we had also we we sprayed no uh, a, a, an insulating foam no dun sa existing roof for waterproofing and para madampen yung ano yung yung patak ng ulan pag ano kasi di ba pag pat, maririnig mo yung patak ng ulan it, it's distracting no pag ano pag may event So the entire facility is now fully air conditioned So but uh, no, no but when we did this we 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 really had an exhaustive research no So before I did this building I also worked with another one Arellano building the Metropolitan Theater no Yon with that it's ano no uh, ngayon it's a pandemic facility no so yon with that Maraming salamat. I hope na ano na nakita natin yung ano no yung evolution uh, at saka yung ano yung connection ng ng sporting practices no with colonial tutelage no and the development of infrastructure no as uh, a signifier of modernity. No thank you. Maraming salamat. Maraming maraming salamat po Professor Gerard Lico. Grabe po. Uh, hindi ko mapuknat. Ako ako uh, ako lang ba to? I believe lahat ng mga participants natin ganun din. Hindi ko po matanggal yung uh, attention ko sa screen with those photos, with those documents po na and videos that you've shared with us. Uh, before I move to a synthesis, babalikan ko po no I'll call on our POC official na isa rin po no one of our athletes din na naglaro inside the Rizal Memorial Coliseum na minimension pa sa atin kanina ni Professor Lico. Can I call on to give us a short message lang po at uh, Commissioner Ramon Fernandez. Com, magandang hapon po sa inyo. Come on. Yes, uh, Josh, magandang hapon. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the professor for that uh, uh, journey towards uh, our history in uh, Philippine sports, especially uh, in the construction of the Rizal uh, Memorial Coliseum just. But uh, before I make a comment about that, I'd just like to thank all our participants again uh, this uh, today, this afternoon. Um, indeed, the traffic was, is very important, no? <clears throat> talking about uh, uh, infrastructures. No? So uh, for those of us, for those of you who are connected with the uh, LGUs uh, in the local government units, uh, it's really very important 
that uh, when you do infrastructures, when you do facilities for sports, make sure that they are according to international specifications. No? You can uh, call on the PSC engineers to uh, help you no? uh, check uh, the specifications of whatever facility you are building, whatever court, the sporting court that you are building, to make sure that uh, <clears throat> they are uh, according to international specifications. Para naman hindi masayang yung uh, facilities ninyo, pwedeng gamitin ng uh, tournaments that are uh, uh, official tournaments. No? So again, uh, thank you to all of you uh, for joining us again today. And indeed, uh, the very first time I uh, played at the Rizal uh, Memorial Coliseum was uh, maybe most of you, uh, I don't know how many of you were born already that year, that, that was way back in uh, 1972. Huh? I can vividly remember my, uh, uh, well, how I behaved, how I uh, uh, remembered it, no? Uh, the opening and the very first tournament that I played there was the opening of uh, the second ABC Youth Championship. This is now the equivalent of uh, FIBA Youth, no? uh, uh, Asia, FIBA Youth. Uh, so, uh, pagpasok namin sa dun sa dugout, pagpasok namin sa floor with the hiyawan ng mga tao, eh, Tumayo yung balahibo ko, no? So, uh, it's, indeed, it's very memorable. And uh, I'm just so happy also na naging part ako ng uh, official dam ng PSC when we had this renovated uh, for uh, the SEA Games, no? Uh, the transformation from the old Rizal Memorial to the now fully air-conditioned uh, uh, Rizal Memorial ay natutuwa ako para sa mga atleta natin na gagamitin yan uh, later on. And the same with other PSC facilities at the uh, Rizal Memorial uh, uh, Multipurpose uh, 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 Gym dito din sa Rizal Memorial Complex and of course sa Ultra where, we, where I spent a lot of years also uh, during my PBA times. No? At the Ultra Pasig, it's uh, fully, it was already air conditioned before, but it's now uh, really fully uh, renovated also. Sad to say that uh, all these facilities right now cannot be used by our athletes because of the pandemic. We offered this to uh, the IATF, to the national government, to use it uh, para sa mga kababayan natin na uh, tinamaan ng uh, COVID-19. No? So uh, be that as it may, we just really hope that uh, uh, this pandemic uh, will come to pass uh, para naman mapakinabangan natin itong uh, mga facilities na to for the, our athletes. Sayang, uh, we might not uh, uh, be able to use this to prepare for uh, SEA Games 2021. Uh, when we are preparing, we are already starting to prepare. So we'll just have to make do of other facilities. So again, thank you very much for uh, joining this. And remember, when you build facilities, make sure that you build it in international standards. Thank you. Thank you very much, Comwan uh, Fernandez. Uh, no, tama po. No, I think the right person po to to really speak about. Uh, the experiences inside the tipong historic Rizal Memorial Sports Complex. I see Comon Fernandez. That being said, let me go through a very few uh, important points that we mentioned po sa atin na ating guest speaker for today. Just to give you a quick, uh, quick recap of uh, of our lecture. Mag napaganda pong uh, point uh, na sinabi ng ating speaker today that sports really bridge the gap 
nung savage imagery sa ating mga Pilipino before no to to an enthusiastic one to enthusiastic nation po no and uh, naka na, pati rin naka included din po sa ating architectural design ng mga school buildings natin noon yung playgrounds that means na mayroon pong inclusion sa sports i also liked what our speaker said about the yung mga atin po mga sports infrastructures ay hindi lang po mere buildings pero it triggered our independence as well especially ang atin pong Rizal Memorial complex and the uh, first time no ang kasama po ang Rizal Memorial Sports Complex uh, pag first time na pag broadcast ng ating uh, games hosting the second Asian Games and uh, that being said uh, marami pa po tayong kailangang abangan ng mga sports infrastructures growing and uh, rehabilitate rehabilitation uh, sa atin po mga national heritage and sporting facilities all over the country kyan po ang kailangan nating abangan and, uh, ito po Uh, sabi ni Sir Reynaldo Reyes from PBF, sabi niya po Prof, uh, Sir, what could be your comment that the present sports infrastructures, more than their historic, historical significance, still reflects the influence of Philippine colonial history? And thus, these infrastructures have any chance of changing design-wise and yun, to structurally showcase more of our true identity? Okay. <clears throat> Oh naman so ano no of course these are naman uh, for example itong Rizal Memorial these are artifacts of colonialism and yet we appreciate them no as part of our development no as a, as a nation so we cannot just reject them no mm-hmm. di ba so instead uh, there is always room no to 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 rehabilitate no so because ano no these buildings are rare no these buildings are rare mm-hmm. and, and that's why but They are so designed no, to be flexible, no. So that's why ang, ang ano, no. Hindi kami halos na hirapan, no. When we when we updated, when we modernized the Rizal uh, Coliseum, no, because it was well designed, no. Uh, tapos kailangan lang talagang i, i ano siya, no. I upgrade nga to to ano no uh, to international specification so pati yung lighting so uh, there are new technologies naman no to to do it no so uh, without tampering no without tampering into the ano no into the historical significance or heritage value no of the existing structure mm-hmm. so hindi po that doesn't necessarily reflect na tayo po ay i mean tingin ko siguro po mas maganda po tingnan natin yung mga per uh, infrastructure sa context po ng art po tama po ba mm-hmm. <coughs> also uh, ayan po no uh, continuing ang all right sabi ni uh, Peter Gabriel Atencio, uh, one of our media friends po with, uh, with us today, are the facilities you mentioned in Sorsogon, Lawag, and Davao are being built according to international standards po? Uh, I, think, I, I think naman because ano, no, uh, these architects no, are, are renowned to... to ano, for example, yung sa Sorsogon, it's an international firm. No? Si Mori and Associates no, ang gumagawa. Si William T., no, uh, it, Uh, ano I, i i think no it follows no kasi pag hindi hindi, hindi siya magagamit na venue pag merong international event no? mm-hmm. and was, even yung UP, sa was, UP no? especially kami <coughs> sa University of the Philippines pag nagdesign kami kailangan talaga ano uh, according to international specification kasi nga nakita namin yung yung ipagkakamali nung nung 70s nung tinayo yung grandstand no na, na mali yung ano yung circumference no ng no, mm-hmm. track so therefore we had to demolish our grandstand no to wake, to to expand no uh, to make the ano no the facility up to global standards all right i think common is also trying to add on that common are you here with us po Stay still yes uh, <clears throat> to add to that josh and uh, professor Uh, we always advise LGUs who are building their facilities to uh, call on us, to call mm-hmm. on our engineers so we can guide them to make sure that uh, these facilities are uh, done uh, according to international standards. No? So as I said, a uh, reminder to the LGUs na to call on the PSA because we can send anytime our, just like what we did in uh, the University of the Philippines in Davao, and several Cebu, several other areas, no? 
Now we send our engineers to make sure that the specs of the facilities are uh, of international standard. All right. So that was the LG natin. Uh, we we should take advantage of the technical assistance provided uh, by the Philippine Sports Commission para hindi tayo magkamali, huh? All right. Correct. And I think uh, Sir Mark Velasco also added to the uh, answer. Sabi niya po, they, cons- yung, they consulted daw po uh, the LG of Davao Sorsogon in Ilocos for those sa sports infrastructures. Professor Lico, this is a question also. What would be your advice po uh, for LGUs who would want to build their own sports facilities then? Uh, as, as much as possible, the, ano, no, the, the venue should be uh flexible no so kailangan ano uh, of course the ano no the, the sporting uh di- aspect no should be at par no at par with the, the global standards at the same time it should be flexible no it flexible meaning marami siyang ma-accommodate na ano kasi in the absence of theater and cultural centers the stadium no the provincial stadium becomes the ano no uh, a provincial uh, arena no uh, at, at di ba nagiging pang concert no i remember no sev- several times no when when i visited mga cultural festival it's held for example in roha city ginagamit for ano no for heritage month as a venue for for ano no for celebrating mga di ba, nag- natutuwa nga ako doon no when i visited yung sa roha city there was a festival na no, celebrating the indigenous peoples of the Philippines no mm-hmm. so nagtayo ng mga examples ng architecture nila because malaki yung space so the, the versatility of the the space uh, makes it not only a sporting venue but as a cultural venue as well mm-hmm. so sports Prof- and culture <laughs> naman ano yan di ba magkapatid mm-hmm. sila no? pareho silang humuhubog no sa ating sa ating pagkapilipino all right, intertwined po yun. And uh, that being said, continuing on that, Prof, uh, with the limited funding po, what, ano po ba yung best uh, structure to build first? Ito medyo baka technical po ito na sagot po. <laughs> Open field muna. <laughs> <laughs> ano yan, dapat kasi ano siya, uh, for, for me, no? kasi in my case, as, as, a, as the architect of the university, no? uh, we rely on facing no ano muna yung uh, ano namin nas, yung budget namin ano muna ang kasya so ano siya progressive dapat siya no I- ibig sabihin ng progressive incremental pero dapat sa initial phase 1 pa lang magagamit mo na yung sports facility even without the the ano no the, the support no the support spaces all right i think we are down to our last last question prof uh, okay lang po ba uh, from our participant also a question. Okay lang daw po ba na may foreign counterparts in the design of a sports complex dito sa Pilipinas? Karamihan po kasi ngayon ay ng mga big facilities ay may foreign partners. Okay po ba yun? For me, uh, yes. No? To give it a global, ano, no? a global stature. No? So partnering with a, with a foreign consultant gives us edge. Kasi bakit? It's a two-way street. No? They give uh, parang a signature no a signature dun sa facility at the same time we filipinos learn no so na, may may transference of knowledge from foreign designers so mapapansin natin yung mga malalaking facility nga ay design ng mga global ano no global architectural firms no so in a way merong transfer of knowledge but at the same time it gives ano no uh, credence no and high reputation no like yung ano no yung Philippine Arena yung uh, SM Mall of Asia at saka yung uh, itatayo sa uh, seaside no sa seaside sa Cebu City All right uh, I hope uh, mga mga participants po natin I hope you learned on this uh, open forum and banay po kayong natutunan thank you very much again to our uh, guest speaker Professor Gerard Lico and uh, an architect for joining us and for giving po no yung best uh, best practices yung mga experiences and also yung history of uh, sports infrastructure in the Philippines you know we are bound by time restrictions but alam po natin na lahat still has a lot of questions to be answered too kaya po wala pong lahat po ng mga sinasend inyo po sa amin na reactions and questions uh, that will not be answered will be included in our data processing wala pong data that will be wasted 
and it will be turned over to our research. We will now move forward to honor and award the Certificate of Appreciation to our 14th speaker for National Sports Summit First Phase Sports Conversations. And to award the certificate, may I call on our PSC Commissioner, joining us also for this afternoon, Commissioner Arnold Agustin. Kom, magandang hapon po sa inyo. Kom, Arnold. Sir Mark is here to award uh, the Certificate of Appreciation para po sa ating uh, speaker. Sir Mark, go ahead po. Yes, good afternoon. Thank you so much, uh, Doc. Prof Liko, you know, uh, last time we met was <laughs> umikot pa tayo doon sa stadium. And uh, thank you very much for your work and uh, creating awareness uh, even sa Rizal Memorial Coliseum. Um, this certificate of appreciation is uh, presented to Professor Gerard Dre Liko, PhD, for his invaluable contribution as a resource speaker for the sports infrastructure in the Philippines. Uh, 14th session of the sports conversation in the final phase of the National Sports Sum Summit 2021, signed William I. Ramirez this 19th day of May 2021. Maraming salamat po, Dr. Lito. Maraming salamat. It's always my honor.